Well, I wanted to have a little visit with you today and talk about Easter, but even more important, spend a little time talking about Lent. You know, Easter has been called our return every single year to baptism, but Lent is the preparation for that return. So often we, in the calendar year, pass by Easter all too fast because we haven't prepared for Easter. And you know, Easter is the most important event on the entire Christian calendar. When we celebrate the death, the burial, the resurrection of our Lord. You know, Paul said, if Christ has not risen from the dead, then our hope is simply vain. We're still dead in our sins. So we don't want to pass by the Easter celebration all too fast. It is the pinnacle of the passion of our Christ. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And while there are differences in the Eastern and Western Latin calendars, as an example, an unfortunate example of disunity within the body of Christ, you know, the Eastern Church using the Julian calendar, the Western Church using the Gregorian calendar, there is an undeniable unity, and we can't forget that, an undeniable unity when it comes to the utmost importance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if you want to find out more about that, read, meditate on 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Because without resurrection, there's no Christianity. So whether you begin with Lent on Ash Wednesday in the West or Clean Monday in the East, I encourage you to participate in the pilgrimage down the road of resurrection by, by participating in the Lenten practice. Lent or Great Lent. It's a 40-day period of fasting and prayer and penance preceding the Paschal celebration. By the way, if you don't know what Paschal means, uh, look it up. Check it out. It has to do with Passover. It goes all the way back to the Old Testament. There's a derivation of the word. Become familiar with it. As uh, the resurrection of Christ is the seminal event in history, preparation for the Paschal celebration. It's the, the event in the calendar year that is of transcendent importance. Lent is, of course, 40 days. It is a 40-day period practiced by Christians all around the world. It is a time of washing, washing away of habits, habits that are displeasing to the Lord. And while this is a penitential practice, it is not merely a period of repentance. It's a process. It's a process in which we are called to come ever closer to our Christ. You can come closer to Christ through ascetic practices. You know, asceticism has a, a bad connotation, but there's a positive connotation of ascetic practices that remind us of the purpose of the passion that our sin separates us from God, who demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Check it out in Romans chapter 5. Some Christians, well, they abstain from something during Lent, and that is to remind them of the sacrifice of Christ. And while some churches encourage members to commit to a sacrifice that can benefit the less fortunate, remember you do that. You do that so that you can do something for someone else. It's not just what you're doing for yourself. You can take the funds, the funds that you would ordinarily have spent on eating out, and you can donate those funds, those unused resources to people that are in need. So Lent is a time. It's a time of humility where the 40 days correspond to things that you've read about in the Scripture. The periods of 40 days in the Scriptures like, while well, the Jews wandering in the wilderness, or the 40 days 
that the Ninevites took to repent or the 40 days during which the Lord Jesus Christ himself experienced temptations in the desert. Lent, of course, culminates in Holy Week. Holy Week begins the day after Palm Sunday. And I will tell you, Palm Sunday has transcendent significance to me. Uh, during Palm Sunday, we memorialize Christ's triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But for me, it is also a remembrance of my own chrismation. These 40 days are the most important time in the Christian calendar, regardless of what they bring to your mind. They reach their climax in the commemoration of the atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We celebrate that Good Friday, his resurrection from the dead the following Sunday. So let us faithfully this year do something. Let us practice the Lenten period as we journey down the road of resurrection where we can proudly proclaim that it is finished, that he has risen, that he has risen indeed. I, I finish a lot of my letters with the salutation, Christ is risen. And there's an affirmation, Christ is risen indeed. You know, if you don't know anything about Lent, get a little primer on Lent. One of my favorites, Great Lent, Journey to Pascha. It's written by Alexander Swimmon. And uh, in, in this book, I was, uh, I was reminded of the Lenten prayer of St. Ephraim the Syrian. Of all the Lenten hymns and prayers, one short prayer can be called the Lenten prayer. Let me uh, share it with you again. This is one of the great teachers of spiritual life, St. Ephraim the Syrian. And he said this, O Lord and Master of my life, Take from me the spirit of sloth, of faint-heartedness, of lust for power, even idle talk. But give rather the spirit of chastity, humility, patience, and love to thy servant. Yea, O Lord and King, grant me to see my own error, and not to judge my brother, for thou art blessed unto the ages of ages. Amen. If Lent is just a word, take this opportunity to translate the word into a practice, a practice that you can engage in from this day until the day, maybe I should say this year, until the day you go home to be with the Lord. The Lenten period is a period of transformation. It is a preparation. It is a time which can become the apex of your year, just as Christ and his resurrection is the apex of life.